Now at 5.30 on WKYT this morning, Governor Bevan announces immediate funding cuts for Kentucky's public colleges and universities. Just ahead, how budget cuts could hurt students financially for many years. Also on WKYT this morning, a man accused of robbing a veteran in Lexington is going to court today. And we're learning some new details on how he carried out the crime. And a Central Kentucky event that draws thousands will not be happening this year. Reactions from business owners just ahead. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. It's the calm after some storms across the Commonwealth. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain, and it is April 1st. Can you believe it? It's already here. Unbelievable, isn't it? A, yeah. a quarter of the year is gone already in 2016, and it's April Fool's Day, so keep that in mind. You know, don't let anybody uh, pull one on you. Let's check in with the meteorologist Micah Harris, who's tracking weather for us. And uh, I guess this colder week, uh, or days ahead, that's no joke either, huh? Yeah, that's no joke, especially as we get towards Sunday. Sunday morning, that's when it's really no joke. I mean, you're talking about your plants. Yeah, hard freeze. Heads up. Green thumb alert for you guys as we travel towards your weekend. There's a few showers still out and about, especially I 75 back towards your west. And that front's trying to make its way through. We have the 50s and 60s this morning. It's a pretty good feel. By the afternoon, we'll be in the lower 60s for all, and also with that mixture of sun and clouds. Now, we're going to go off into your weekend, like Bill was talking about. It's becoming a bit colder. 36 degrees tomorrow morning, and that's not even close. Is we uh, not even close to the coldest shot we hit there on Sunday morning? I'm going to talk all about that and how low we go coming up. Okay, see you shortly. Let's get to the news. The budget battle continues to heat up in Frankfurt. Governor Matt Bevan has now ordered immediate funding cuts to all Kentucky public colleges and universities. And the governor's order comes as the budget talks between leaders of the Democratic controlled House and the Republican controlled Senate are at a stalemate. They basically walked away from the table yesterday. WKYT's Mark Barber is joining us live now with the latest developments in the state budget battle. Good morning, Mark. Go ahead from here. UK's president called those cuts draconian when he testified in Frankfurt. This morning, school leaders at UK and other state schools are waking up and trying to figure out how they will manage the 4.5% immediate spending cut. Many think students might suffer because schools might hike their tuition to offset the cuts. We don't know what those cuts will mean for UK at this point. They're still trying to figure out what measures they will take. The House and the Senate were trying to reach a compromise on a budget yesterday. Yesterday, they became deadlocked over the education cuts. Republicans say those cuts could relieve some of the state's overwhelming pension debt. But Democrats think the cuts will seriously hurt states' universities. When the budget talks fell apart yesterday, Bevan went ahead and ordered the state schools to slash their budgets by 4.5 percent by the end of the business day. House Democrats say they are now reviewing the executive order. The governor traded words with Kentucky Sports Radio's Matt Jones on Twitter. Jones tweeted that the governor's order would create depressing tuition hikes. Bevan responded with a link to an opinion piece in the Louisville Courier Journal that highlighted some wasteful spending at universities. The governor ended the. Now move along, kids. UK uh, started trying to work again to figure out what they're going to do uh, back in January if these uh, cuts went through. So far, no word this morning again on how they will cut 4.5% from their budgets. Well, we'll get to, to Mark with reaction a little bit later on. Since Kentucky does not have a veterinary school, the state partners with Auburn University to offer 38 students in-state tuition. Students and teachers fear that budget cuts will change that. Elizabeth Manson is one example. Her dream is to become a veteran. But after years of hard work and being accepted to Auburn's vet school, her dream suddenly will cost more than she imagined. And this is honestly something that's going to impact the rest of my life. As I take on an extra $100,000 in loans, that's going to be years and years more that I'll have to work in order to pay that back. Border. Yeah. According to numbers, the Council on Post-Secondary Education provided to the Kentucky Veterinary Medical Association, it will cost the state $29,000 this year for each Kentucky student paying in-state tuition at Auburn's vet school. The KVMA says projected budget cuts reduce the number of those spots from 38 down to 22. Other news now, a man accused of robbing a veteran in Lexington is expected to be arraigned today. 
Police say 38-year-old David Kirk Jr. turned himself in yesterday after a warrant was issued for his arrest on Tuesday. This morning, we're learning more on how police say he pulled off that crime. WKYT's Caitlin Center joins us live from outside the Fayette County Courthouse with new details this morning. Good morning, Caitlin. Good morning, Michelle. David Kirk is expected here in court later this afternoon. This after he turned himself into police yesterday after being accused of robbing disabled veterans last week. Now, police did have a warrant out for Kirk's arrest. Kirk's wife told police he told her he did something stupid and admitted to her he had stolen the bucket outside of Walmart and that he was going to turn himself in. It was last week that we first reported a man had robbed Veterans Outreach, stealing about $250 in his getaway. Veteran Rodney Brock says the man who robbed him had a revolver, but his initial reaction was to fight back and to save the money. Brock was injured in the altercation. He says the bucket was bolted to the table, so the robber took the table and all with him. Money's gone. I'm sure the money's gone. We're not going to get the money back. But the thing of it is, I mean, that was really a cheap, cheap little thrill. And uh, he could have got somebody bad hurt, especially with a gun in his hand. So I, uh, I, ha I had no animosity toward that gentleman at all. Brock says that he will be going to Walmart, the same one, next week to volunteer, and he's just thankful to have that opportunity after what had happened. Live in Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Caitlin, thank you very much. Corrections leaders are looking for an inmate who they say walked away from a Lexington prison. They say 32-year-old Jason Arnold was reported missing from Blackburn Correctional Complex just before 8 o'clock last night. He is serving a 10-year sentence for theft, forgery, and evidence tampering convictions out of Madison County. Arnold would have been eligible for parole in August. Lexington police have charged a woman they say blew heroin onto a police officer. Police say they originally arrested 35 year old Anjanette Halcombe on a marijuana charge. Now, while taking her to jail, police say an officer heard a noise coming from the back seat of his cruiser. Police say the officer pulled over and noticed heroin powder on the floor. They say Halcombe then blew the powder everywhere, and some of it landed on the officer. The officer was not injured. A wrongful death lawsuit has been filed over the death of a Whitley County child caused by a school bus. Ten-year-old Jonathan Chatham died last year when police say a Whitley County school bus hit him after he stepped off of the bus. In the lawsuit, his parents claim he died because the bus operated in a negligent and reckless manner. More than a dozen defendants are named in the lawsuit, including the superintendent, the school board, and the bus driver. The lawsuit is asking for a trial by jury and damages in the form of medical expenses and pain and suffering. Virginia State Police say a trooper was killed in a shooting at a Greyhound bus terminal in Richmond. Virginia State Police say they were alerted to shots being fired at the station yesterday afternoon. When they got there, an unidentified man pulled out a gun and shot Trooper Chad Dermeyer multiple times. Two troopers nearby returned fire, killing the suspect. Police say Dermeyer was taken to a hospital where he later died. Authorities say it is unclear what led up to the shooting. Days before Wisconsin's crucial primary contest, Donald Trump met with Republican Party leaders in Washington, as well as members of his foreign policy team. The meetings Thursday follow a series of tumultuous days on the campaign trail for Trump, centering on remarks on abortion he later recanted. Don Champion has the latest from New York. Donald Trump is still trying to clarify his controversial remarks on abortion. Appearing on Fox News last night, the Republican frontrunner suggested MSNBC edited the town hall during which he asserted women should be punished for having abortions if the procedure were to become illegal. You really had to hear the whole thing. I mean, this was a long, convoluted question. This was a long discussion. And they just cut it out. In a statement, MSNBC maintained absolutely no part of the exchange between Trump and Chris Matthews was edited out. The issue followed Trump to Washington yesterday as he met with GOP leaders to discuss party unity and delegate allocation. Rival Ted Cruz is leading Trump in Wisconsin, where he's counting on a win in next week's primary. There's no doubt that Donald Trump is the Kim Kardashian presidential candidate. He sits on Twitter and, and makes a lot of noise. 
but he has no solutions to fixing the problem. Trump also trails both Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders among registered women voters. Clinton bashed Trump in New York yesterday and set herself apart from Sanders on women's rights. I know Senator Sanders supports a woman's right to choose, but I also know Planned Parenthood Action Fund and NARAL endorsed me because I have led on this issue. Sanders is ahead of Clinton in Wisconsin, but still trails her by a wide margin in the delegate count. Don Champion, CBS News. The presidential candidates make a final campaign push in Wisconsin this weekend before turning their full attention to New York's primary April 19th. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, who had been running for president before he dropped out, claims that he'll be making a, quote, major announcement endorsement today. Through his official Twitter account, Senator Paul also claimed that announcement would be huge, as he put it, a term that Republican frontrunner Donald Trump often uses. Senator Paul dropped out of the presidential race earlier in the year. He has yet to endorse any of the remaining candidates. Now, today is April Fool's Day. And that's worth noting because Senator Paul has been known to use social media as a way to joke around from time to time. It's been a popular Central Kentucky event for years, but Berea City officials say the annual Spoon Bread Festival won't be held this year. The Berea Chamber of Commerce voted to cancel this year's festival due to safety concerns following recent protests over the Confederate flag. City officials want the sale and display of the Confederate flag banned from the festival, but the chamber says they can't place that ban without a new ordinance from the city. Over 60,000 people attended last year's Spring Spoon Bread Festival. Now many business owners fear they will lose thousands if the event is canceled. People from all over the state, just not Berea, uh, people from out of state that come to it because they've heard about Spoon Bread and they want to taste it. McCormick says all 63 rooms at the Boone Tavern have already been booked for what was supposed to be the festival weekend. He estimates the tavern could lose close to $15,000 now that city officials have canceled the event. Major decision and uh, interesting controversy there in Berea. Time this morning is 5.40. It's 20 before 6 and time to check live drive traffic this morning and see what's going on. Lots of green on there this morning indicating uh, really no problems. In fact, uh, we have uh, no reports of any delays or issues this morning. It's a good ride in from Nicholasville or Versailles, Paris, Winchester. Uh, no uh, issues whatsoever. In fact, uh, most of the times they look to be heading a little bit uh, shorter than usual. So uh, get in there early. Get it done on your Friday. Get to your weekend, right? <laughs> Start it off quick, right? <laughs> there you go. A lot more news coming up on WKYT on your Friday morning in just a moment. Heroism can come in all forms and ages. Coming up, a teenager helps police take down a suspected shoplifter. We have the rain still out and about. That's trying to move on out. And once that moves on out, that cooler air filters on in. It's really all about the weekend, though. I'll show you those temperatures coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. For the most part, we're trying to push that rain on out. It's taking its own sweet time. Over toward the western areas, that's where you still see those showers. And it's only showers. I'm not really seeing any thunderstorm activity going on at this moment. But the heaviest downpours right now rolling through Barberville if you work your way down 25 East. And also back toward Hyden. Hyden, you're next in line as you work your way up 421 through Leslie County. That's going to be the area uh, that you're getting the heaviest rain. Other than that, just some light showers out and about. And that front is still trying to push through. We have the 60s down south, 50s back toward our region and up toward the north here in Lexington and north and westbound. Lawrenceburg, Frankfort, Shelbyville, Simpsonville. Uh, those areas right there in the mid 50s will finish off in the low 50s when it's all said and done. Then we get into the afternoon. So let's talk about when this rain moves on out. I'd say 8 to about 10 a.m. for the far southeastern areas. If you're sitting High Rogers Parkway or even uh, that 460 area, that's where you're going to be seeing that rain until right around that 10 a.m. and then it moves on out. But it's just a few showers here and there. By noontime, it's long gone. Uh, then we look for those temperatures to jump to the low to mid 60s. It'll be a really nice feel later on this afternoon, especially southbound. There's 5 p.m. and just a few clouds out and about. Can't rule out a sprinkle to the far north as we get into the afternoon time. Other than that, we stay dry once that rain moves out. Then Saturday morning, cool air rushes on in, 30s and 40s. By the afternoon, we're there in the lower 50s. It's not going to be the best feeling day on Saturday, but at least it'll be mostly dry. I do want to show you this, and I have that in my seven-day forecast. Far northern areas, you could pick up a slight chance of rain during the afternoon and off into the evening hours. And that's it there on Saturday.
let's talk about Sunday. Possible hard freeze. Look at these temperatures showing up on this particular model. 20s and some lower 30s. So that hard freeze is a possibility. Heads up, green thumbs, that you're going to be running into that. Remember, a slight chance of rain for the far north. That goes for Saturday. And then that hard freeze, that's what everybody's eyes are on there for Sunday. But both days sitting in the low to mid 50s. And both days mainly dry, too. Here's a look across the region. Another sh awesome shot. That's Rachel Hatter. And that's for a beautiful rainbow. Uh, on the way to Paris. Really, really cool shot. Michelle Hawk sent this one in from Nicholasville of the Mamatis Clouds. Awesome shot there for Michelle. And then Lauren Meek, my friend in Clark County, sent this one in. How cool is that? I mean, that's an that's a awesome, awesome panoramic view of that rainbow. And we have several pictures to show off from Twitter and Facebook, so jump on there, throw your pictures on there, and maybe I'll show them off here within the next hour 15 that we have. Going into the week, and remember, it's mainly dry, guys, but it's up and down next week. 60s, back to 40s, 60s, back to 40s. We got it. That's the way it's going to go. <laughs> does not saying. stop anytime I soon. I was watching people trying to take pictures of that uh, rainbow last really night, cool. and they kept backing up. You know, yeah. like, how do you get yeah. enough perspective? How do you get enough? Right. You know, it's, it's really cool. It really was neat. Really cool. You know, Beautiful. they say a double rainbow is a sign of good fortune. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I told you Look. about the couple that they, they got back in their car, and it said, just married. So I thought that was really cool. Oh. You know? Cool moment. Do they have a yeah. All right, uh, 547 this morning. A teenager is now being called a hero after he helped police stop a suspected shot. Shoplifter in Washington. Police say a man was attempting to steal about $800 worth of merchandise from a Target store at a mall just outside of Seattle. Now, when approached by security, the man took off. Moments later, that's when police say he was met by 14 year old Kevin Mertz. Now, with his football mindset, Kevin sized up the suspected shoplifter and tackled him to the ground. While citizens aren't encouraged to step in, normally police say they are thankful for Kevin's actions. Yeah. And when asked about his heroic act, Kevin told reporters he just hopes to have that same intensity in his next football game. <laughs> Check that out. Pretty good, jumped into action, didn't he? All right, maybe he'll uh, do that. That guy's 14 years old. <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> Wow. <laughs> Big kid, huh? All right, uh, 548 on WKYT this morning. Coming up, you'll get the stories making news at this hour. A lot going on. We'll be checking traffic as well, see how things are moving along, what's hot on the web and social media, and some health news on WKYT this morning. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. 5.51 is the time, bright and early, as we were saying, get in there, get it done today on your Friday, right? <laughs> it is Friday. It's so exciting. <laughs> it Let's take a look at some of the stories we're working on at this hour. Our news team working this story. Governor Matt Bevin has ordered an immediate 4.5% funding cut to all Kentucky public colleges and universities. The order comes as budget talks between House and Senate leaders broke down again yesterday. Donald Trump continues to try to unite the Republican Party behind him despite a series of tumultuous days on the campaign trail. The billionaire frontrunner met privately Thursday with the Republican national chairman in Washington to discuss delegate allocation and party rules. Latest polls show Trump in a tight battle with rival Ted Cruz in Wisconsin, which holds its crucial primary next Tuesday. Other polls show him struggling to gain ground among women voters. State police in Virginia are mourning the loss of one of their own. 37-year-old Chad Darmeyer died yesterday when a man he had been talking to during a training exercise in Richmond shot him multiple times. The gunman was shot dead by other troopers on the scene. A woman is in custody after allegedly kidnapping a baby boy from a mall in Pennsylvania. Seven-week-old Ashir Simmons was found safe last night, hours after he was taken. Police say the suspect took off with him after befriending the boy's family. That's scary. Mm. New research reinforces what doctors have told pregnant women for years, do not smoke. The latest study at the National Institute of Environmental Health Science shows smoking cigarettes while pregnant chemically modifies a fetus, uh, the DNA, and this can lead to serious birth defects. Doctors now say that drinking coffee decreases your risk of colon cancer. Researchers at the University of Southern California compared data from 5,000 people who had been diagnosed with colorectal cancer against healthy people. The findings suggest that the more coffee a person drinks, the lower risk of colon cancer. Well, that's good news for us. And the Centers for Disease Control is gathering health officials from around the country today for a one day Zika Action Plan Summit. The group will discuss ways to tackle and prevent the mosquito borne virus from spreading. Zika has been linked to birth defects and neurological problems. Let's get a check at today's traffic in our live drive traffic.
A lot of green out there. It's looking good on this last day of spring break and this April 1st. If you're heading out the door, it looks like it's going to be a smooth ride so far this morning. Let's check in now with Bill with a look at what's happening on the net. A lot going on on WKYT.com as we keep everything updated for you this morning. Uh, lawmakers returned to Frankfurt today still with no budget and now reacting to Governor Bevin's order that immediately slashes the state allocations to state universities. We'll be following up on the budget battle in Frankfurt today. Also, so on our website this morning, we have the full story about the decision to cancel the Spoonbread Festival in Berea. The mayor and some other leaders there called on the festival to ban the sale of Confederate flags and merchandise. There's been lots of controversy. Things have settled down after last night's storms, and we have some video of some of the damage in western Kentucky and in the Louisville area as well. Also, some beautiful pictures of a double rainbow. Many folks around here saw last evening. Lots of those are great pics, for instance, on Micah's Twitter. Uh, I actually took one myself, but it's not as uh, good a picture as some of those <laughs> that have gone out to, that have been uh, seen here this morning. Really good shots. All right, this weekend, a great chance to get out and plan for those spring and summer projects around your home or backyard. The 41st Annual Home and Garden Show kicks off later today at Rupp Arena and Heritage Hall, and you can get ideas and advice, see what options you might have around your place. On Kentucky.com, there's more about the potential budget crisis looming in Kentucky. Also, a federal judge has ruled that Kentucky cannot ban corporations from donating to political campaigns. And CBS This Morning is coming up at 7 with your eye opener and the latest from around the world, plus some special guests this morning. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and for the latest anytime, WKYT.com. Yeah, that rain's still pushing through western areas of our viewing area. So western Kentucky, or eastern Kentucky, that is, uh, still dealing with some of those showers. Some of the heavier downpours across 25 east and also that 421 region as you're traveling through Leslie County, hiding, getting in on the mix, especially southern portions of Leslie County and also Clay County. Then we look north of that, and it's just bits and pieces of showers. This is your main chance of rain for today. By 8, 9 a.m., it's long gone. So temperatures there in the 60s far south. That front is inching its way through. Richmond now at 54 degrees. Lexington coming in at 54 degrees, too. We get into your afternoon, starting off in the 50s with a few showers here and there. And then we hit the afternoon at 62 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. That's not a bad feel. I mean, that is about 10 to 12 degrees below where we were yesterday. But that's still really nice, so we will take that. We're going to talk about your weekend forecast. Green thumb alert, possible hard freeze that we're going to go over with another hour of WKYT News in just a couple of minutes.